Hey everyone, my name is Alexandra and I am a watercolor artist. Welcome to part two of Every Flower You Need to Know Drawing Edition. Today we are going to build off of last tutorial and with all of the flowers that we painted, we're gonna take them to the next level with drawing. For those of you that have been following me for a while, you know that I love to add drawings to my paintings. When I started with art, honestly, I started with drawing. It's the thing that I've done for as long as I can remember. Watercolor ended up coming later, so this is something that I love to do, love to teach. So today, I'm gonna show you guys some super simple ways to really bring these flowers to life. Let's get started. For today's tutorial, you guys will need some sort of fine liner. I'm using the Micron 05. These ones are really nice just because they are waterproof. So if you want to add paint later, they're not going to bleed everywhere. And the second thing is a piece of paper. I'm building off of the last tutorial. So if you guys haven't seen it yet, go check it out. Otherwise, if you guys want to just draw along without painting, you are more than welcome to. I've just split my paper into nine squares so that I kind of know where I'm drawing each flower. So we're just gonna start from the top and work our way down. So the first flower that we are going to draw is our Alpine Daisy. Now for this one, I am going to start just by outlining the center of my flower and that's that center yellow point and I'm just drawing a half circle going around each one. Now once I've done that we want to outline the petals. So when I'm outlining especially with my watercolor painting I actually like to not go directly around where I've painted and I like to sort of stagger my pen a little bit to the outside those of you that have followed my tutorials before, you know that I like to do this. Um, I just find it adds more interest to my paintings. The main idea with this one specifically is that the flower kind of looks like it's almost drooping a little bit. And that is just so that we get the effect that it is opening up. So we're gonna do the exact same thing with our second one and we're painting these sort of, sorry, not painting, <laughs> drawing. My brain's always in painting mode. We're drawing these long, teardrop shapes and we're going all the way around just outlining where we've painted if you're following along with this without having painted already just know that we, we can start with that center petal and just work our way out and around so once I've done that I'm gonna go ahead and draw my stems I'm gonna do a straight line down for those of you that are doing this without having painted with watercolor, what you want to do is two skinny lines parallel to each other just so that you can actually see the stem. I'm not going to just because my paint gives me that look that the stem is thicker. Now for my leaves, I'm going to start from the top of the leaf and I'm drawing these jagged edges coming all the way down. So little line down, up, back down, up and curved, back down. And we're going all the way down to the base of our leaf. Now I want to draw little veins in the leaves just so that they really stand out. So for these drawings, I want to keep them super simple because this is a beginner friendly tutorial. If you guys want more detailed tutorials on drawing florals, leave a comment and let me know because I would love to show you guys. So the next flower we're going to go to is our rose. And this one's a little bit interesting because I painted it very loose. So we're gonna have to be really intentional with where we put our lines. So starting in the center, I'm actually just gonna outline this little white space that we have. So I'm sort of drawing a teardrop shape there, which it's gonna be a little tricky to see, but as I go, you'll sort of see it all come together. So now what I wanna do is sort of outline 
the outer edge of each of these curved shapes that I painted. And I can add a little bit of a wave to them and bring them towards the center with the idea that I'm essentially just creating what looks like petals. So a little bit of a wave, bringing it towards the center, sort of have these half petal shapes You can see that this is just really bringing our rose to life, keeping in mind that I want my petals at the bottom to be bigger, smaller at the top. Now, same as I did with my daisy, I'm following my line all the way down for my petals. I can outline them with a nice smooth line. I'm drawing sort of this teardrop shape, or this one's a little bit more of a marquee because it comes to a point, and then I'll draw a stem going down the center, keeping my line a little bit wavy. I want it to look really natural, not too stiff. And for this one specifically, we're gonna add some more veins to our flower. So starting from the outer edge, I'm drawing lines down towards the center. I'm following the same concept on the other side. So sort of this kind of marquee shape. Have it pointed on either end a wavy line down the center. And now my veins, I'm going from the top, angling them down, connecting with that center line. Top, angling down, connecting with that center line. So you can see how these are immediately just coming to life. Now for our forget-me-nots, we have a smaller flower here. So we really just wanna make the individual flowers stand out. So we're actually gonna start with this outer one just because there's nothing around it, so it'll be the easiest to do. And we're gonna draw a little circle around the yellow, but I'm leaving tiny little gaps and white space just because I don't want it to look as uniform as the daisy. I want it to be a little more loose. Now I'm gonna loosely outline each petal. So I have the five petals outlined and you can see right away the difference. So now second one, kind of a wavy line around that center yellow dot. And I'm loosely outlining each petal. It's okay if I'm not directly over top of where I painted with my watercolor. So now I'm gonna continue doing this all the way through my painting. So these ones up here, I just have to decide what flower I want to be sitting at the front. So I'm gonna do this bottom flower here and then everything else is going to end up sitting right behind it. So now that that one's outlined for all of these ones that are behind, what I'm gonna do is when they start overlapping, I'm just gonna cut the petals off so it looks like they're layering. And we're doing center petal and five little ones all the way around. Same thing goes for this little cluster here. Now that we've outlined all of our petals, we can do our stems coming down. And I'm following exactly where I painted the stems. For those of you that didn't paint initially, we have one main stem coming down the center here. And then each flower is going to connect with that center stem by drawing a really light, loose line. And then we can go over our leaves I'm making sure that I'm using really light pressure with my pen because I wanna keep a super delicate look here. And I'm just doing these sort of long shapes that are pointed on either end, keeping everything really fluid, really loose. So now we can move to our second layer and we're gonna go on to our buttercups. So for these ones, we're gonna start by outlining the flower portions. So same idea as with the forget-me-nots, I'm just gonna loosely outline the centers of the ones where I drew them. Not a perfect circle, just kind of doing a dotted loose circle around it. And then we're gonna go over each petal. These ones, the petals are gonna go wider and come a little bit more to a point at the tip of them. 
So they're a little different than my forget-me-nots in that they have a bit more of an intentional shape and it's not just the sort of ovals. We're gonna do that on each of them. I don't mind if my pen is not directly around my watercolor. I honestly think it gives the painting a lot more interest. So all the way around. And now for these flowers that look sort of like they're sticking up, we're gonna start with our outside two petals first, following the exact same shape. I'm drawing them as if I'm drawing my top two petals. And then we're doing one more in the center. The reason you wanna do your outside petals first is so that it sort of looks like they're layering in front of those inside ones. And now same as our other flowers, we're gonna do our stem all the way down. All of the outside flowers are connecting to sort of the center stem, just like with the forget-me-nots. And now for the leaves, we're gonna follow a similar concept as the daisies here, but I'm making them a little bit more jagged and a little bit more loose just because this is more of a wildflower. So it has a really rustic look. So I'm just doing longer jagged edges and that's pretty much the difference between this one and the Alpine Daisy. All right, now that that one's done, we're gonna move on to our lavender. So this one, the idea is that I am outlining each of these little ovally shapes and we're just gonna layer them over each other. So you'll notice that for a lot of these, I'm actually not even connecting it at the bottom because I want it to look like they're layering. So everything is angled towards that center line. Almost you can imagine a V shape as if they would connect, connect. And we're doing these half ovals all the way down angling towards that center line. I can make it more full as I head towards the bottom. Just because naturally there would be some more petals there than there are at the top. And I'm semi overlapping them with where I've painted, but I'm not being too picky. This one's a super easy one to add pen to, as well as draw if you haven't painted yet. So all of our little ovals angling in that V shape towards the center. And then we'll draw our stem at the bottom and outline our leaves. Next, we have our anemone. So this one, I actually don't really wanna outline the very center of it. I'm just gonna go around this outside part and what I'm doing is I'm painting, drawing little half circles with some white spaces just around the outside. So I don't wanna take away from where I've painted. I simply want to make it stand out more. So now I'm gonna go with my pen and I'm drawing the petal shapes around that center. And this is gonna really make it stand out. Now, sometimes what I like to do is I can add little lines around the outside of my petal. And the idea with that is it just makes it look like my petal might be curled over just a little bit. It's gonna add some more interest. And with this flower specifically, because I love to add more detail to it, just because it is white and it is so simple, we can start from the center of our flower and just add a couple really light lines. And what I'm doing is I'm actually just quickly pulling my pen away from the center and that's gonna make it sort of fade out towards the end, make it look really nice and subtle. And now we're gonna do our stem coming down. This one specifically, I'm gonna draw both sides of the stem. So two really narrow parallel lines. And then we can get our leaves in here as well. So this is kind of the idea that you guys might want to do specifically for your rose or for your daisy, just to give the stem a little bit more weight to it. And then painting our, drawing our leaves. We're gonna follow similar concept to our buttercups where I'm doing my wavy lines down. 
So it's exactly like the jagged ones of the daisy, but the difference is I'm adding a bit more of a wave to them. And then I can draw a vein in the center of my leaf if I want. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to our hydrangeas. So for these ones, it is a cluster of a ton of little flowers. We are not going to draw each one. We're just gonna give the illusion that there are lots of flowers there. So the idea is that I'm using the shape that I was practicing in my lavender, and I'm doing these sort of half circle shapes, and I'm clustering them in little flower shapes, but I'm sort of just overlapping them all throughout my flower. So you're just imagining you're drawing these little flower shapes without the center of the flower. And then once my hydrangea starts looking really full, then I'm just filling it up with more of these little half oval shapes. So we're going all the way around. Keeping this a really simple loose floral and I want to not add too much detail because I really want the coloring to show through that I've drawn underneath. And now I'm gonna overlap my stems, being careful to still let the green paint show through. I don't want them to look fully black. And then for my leaves, I'm gonna do similar to what I did with my roses and I'm simply just outlining where I've painted. And next we're gonna go to our tulips. These ones are super nice and simple to draw. We're gonna start with the actual floral part and I'm gonna start by outlining the two petals that are sitting in front. So these ones are very much a teardrop shape. Pick whichever one you wanna start with and then everything else is just gonna look like it's sitting in behind. So I'm starting with my two front teardrop shapes and then that back one is just sitting in behind. So now that we've done that, we can outline this little green portion here. So I essentially am just doing two tiny little leaves, kind of continuing with that idea that it's a bit of a teardrop shape. And then we will draw our stem coming down. Again, you guys can do the two parallel lines if you want. I'll show you just on this one. I'm doing really skinny lines beside each other, doing it super light, almost leaving some white space. And then we're gonna outline our leaf. So the leaf coming to a point on either end, being nice and long. And then I can paint, draw my vein in the center. I keep saying paint because I'm used to doing painting tutorials, but we are using a pen here, so we're drawing our line in the center. And now we get to go to our last flower, which is our sunflower. I know so many of you guys have asked me to teach sunflowers and love painting them as well. Um, I did a tutorial last fall, so feel free to check that one out. So around the center of this one, doing the exact same thing that we did with our anem anemone, and I'm just doing little dots around the outside. I'm not doing a perfect circle. I'm doing little clusters with my pen in the circle. And this one, I actually want the inside to stand out more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm honestly just adding squiggles <laughs> into the center. Because it's over top of brown, it's gonna be really subtle and it's actually just gonna make it look more like seeds. And now I can go to each of my petals and just generally outline the shape. I'm okay if I'm off center a little bit from where I've painted. I like to make them different shapes from each other just because when you look at sunflowers, the petals definitely don't look all the same. Then we have our stem coming down. And now for our big leaves, this one is gonna be most similar to the first one that we did where we're doing jagged edges, keeping them nice and loose. Stem down the center.
And like I did with my rose, I wanna add veins on this one, but I want them to be a little less uniform, so we're just gonna do really loose, kind of wavy lines coming towards the center. And that is all we have for adding drawing to our flowers. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I know it's a little different when we're drawing on top of watercolor. So do leave a comment and let me know if you guys want drawing specific tutorials. Um, I, as I've mentioned before, would love to teach you guys. If you guys followed along, please take a picture, share it with me on Instagram at Alexandra Victoria Studio. And lastly, if you haven't already, make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. We'll see you next time.